Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chris. I'm here with Zach Lepofsky. He directed Dead Rising Watchtower, the new movie from Crackle. And we're going to be playing a little Dead Rising Super Extreme Fun Time oh, Arcade Remix. The Arcade Infinity. Remix, which I haven't played the arcade <laughs> one, so this is cool. I can never remember the whole title, so then I just start saying a <laughs> bunch of ridiculous words. Um, so, Dead Rising, uh, let's, let's talk about how you first sort of started playing Dead Rising, how you got involved with this project. Sure, yeah. I've always been a, a big gamer, but mostly on my desktop. And uh, when Dead Rising kind of started to arrive into my lap, the hilarious part of it was my mom never let me have a console when I was a kid. <laughs> and so she'd let me have a computer. I could kill as many people I wanted on my computer, but never a console in the living room. The hypocrisy so, of our yeah, parents. I know. And so then I, you know, when I got the job, I was able to, we... I got an Xbox One and put it into the, because I was staying with her because we were shooting in my hometown. Nice. So uh, I got to bring the Xbox into the living room and plop it down and hook it up to the TV. And I was like, there's nothing you can do now, Mom. <laughs> and just like, you know, just like you're doing now, drive through hundreds and hundreds of zombies. And, and eventually she was just completely horrified. But <laughs> it was. I had a moment like that with my mom. I started, when I started working at IGN, I was, I was doing strategy guides. And I basically was like, See, <laughs> you can exactly. be like this thing that you said was going to rot my brain. My parents never really said it was going to rot my brain or anything, but <laughs> they, uh, yeah, it's it's funny. So where did where did you film it? You said your hometown. Yeah, so we shot in Vancouver, which is where I'm from. Canadian in our midst. That's right. So the awesome thing about this game right here is this. Right, I mean, it's one of the <laughs> awesome things, but this particular thing. Absolutely. Basically, just get to steamroll a bunch of bodies. So obviously, lots of carnage and mayhem in in Watchtower. Talk about sort of the bloodiest, most <laughs> disgusting thing you had to do on there set. There are, you know, one of my favorite kills that you can do once you get, you know, once you're using your combos in, in normal, just say like Dead Rising Three, is the sledge saw, where you can, you know, sledge it into someone with the saw and then lift them up off the ground and cut them in half. Right. So we do that in the film, and it's pretty spectacularly gory. Um, there's some really good beheadings, too, that we spent a lot of time to make as gross as possible. <laughs> <laughs> How do you make a beheading as gross as possible? What kind of goes into that? Well, you got to, you know, build the head, build the torso, build all the pieces that are in between the spine and the guts and all the tendons and ev all the juiciness that's in, in between your head and your uh, body, and then make it all look realistic, and then slowly separate them as you pump blood through the entire thing so that it spews blood everywhere. And then once you film it, usually you need to take that into the computer and add even more uh, blood to it and stuff. So when you were sort of first starting out making movies, this was gore and, and that sort of thing something that you worked with hands on? Yeah, I mean, I've always loved genre, kind of all genres. So whether it's horror, f adventure, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, all that kind of stuff. I love trying to think of some creative way of killing people that hasn't been done before. Because there's been a lot of people that have been killed over the... <laughs> yeah. Over the years, Walking in Dead in specific has yeah. like taken up a lot of them in the recent so years. So every time I'm charged with mass murder, I try and at least do it in <laughs> a way that no one's done before. What's your favorite? What's your favorite kill that you that is in uh, Watchtower? Ah, that's a good question. Let me think. I think probably. I think that sledgehammer, sledge saw one is. I just like it because it's so right out of the game. Um, when I, you know, do that in the game, I was just like, oh, we got to do exactly that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. I, I think um, it, I'm always kind of intrigued by all the work that goes into gore, especially yeah. just because it's like there's a lot of craftsmanship that goes into it. <laughs> totally. And I think that's maybe lost on people who are just grossed out by it. Well, it's also one of the hardest things to do on a film because it takes a lot of time. So, like, to do it on set, if you want to do one really big kill that costs you hours. So it means a bunch of other stuff can't get done. So you really have to pick wisely when you're going to do it. What's your what's your take on sort of CG gore versus practical gore? What do you... Um, I like basically a combo. So like do as much as you can practically, but often just practical doesn't look gory enough or doesn't necessarily look realistic. I but like how your, your measurement for success is, <laughs> does it look gory enough? Yeah. Well, it's just, it's, it's tough to have a high volume of blood pump out practically like because you have to think of all the plumbing and pressure that is involved to be able to pull that off so often but you know it's great to have something physical on set that you can have the dynamics of all that so but then usually you just have to add a bunch more blood on top of it 
when you went to school, did you study things like anatomy to really <laughs> learn how the, the pumping mechanisms worked? And no, the good thing about on a film set is you have everyone has a specialty in some very obscure thing. So you, they, <laughs> they bring out the blood guy, and that's everything he, that he knows about. That's amazing. Well, I just I just finished this level. Here, let's give you a shot to, uh, to take right. on this level as well. This is crazy. The arcade version is so different than the... <laughs> it's like such a, a, an exaggerated version of Dead Rising, which is already exaggerated. All right, we're back. Zach's going to give it a shot. All right, here and we now go. Got the you're, surf working bot with, uh, you're working with Frank in the Surfbot hat. All right. Here Do we, we go. see the Surfbot in the yeah. movie? Yeah, so we build a full scale one for the film uh, that plays a cameo in a bunch of scenes. And then also Jesse Metcalf, who plays um, the lead in the film, he also, halfway through the film, customizes his clothing as you can in the game. <laughs> and he puts on a Surfbot t shirt. So you see in all the posters, he's wearing a Surfbot t shirt for the covered in blood of course there's a lot a lot a lot of winks a lot of fan service in this movie yeah what, all the uh, way through there's even a um because in dr3 you can collect oh look let me do my super here can i all right <laughs> oh, you got super stabby um that was easy uh <laughs> so in dr3 you can collect frank west statues um for extra uh points i think they call it ap and um so in the film we made a Frank West statue and then hit it. Um, all right, here we Trigger, go. Trigger, yeah. Yeah. Um, hit it in almost the background of every scene so that you could oh, nice. watch the uh, film and try and find the Frank West statues. So there's, there's going to be an Easter egg mode of the Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's so many Easter eggs in the whole thing. Ah. So what characters from the game show up in the film for people who aren't familiar yet? Um, well, the main one is Frank West, and then, oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> it's mayhem. You know, by the way, if that Who happened in real life, you'd be totally here. fine. Who put this telephone pole here? Main one is Frank West, uh, and then there's, you know, cameo versions of Nick uh, and Chuck from DR2, and then they are uh, mentions of Hemlock and things like that. We also invented our main leads. The, you know, the main character is kind of a, a Frank West updated for today, so he's kind of like a vice reporter. Right. Um, right. He is kind of going in behind enemy lines, but instead of his camera, like Frank here, he's got um, his cell phone, and he's trying to, you know, record videos to go viral of the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> um, it's just like, is there an internet to even go viral when it's the zombie apocalypse? Well, Apparently, the yes. cool thing about Dead Rising is that you... There's the rest of the world's just watching the apocalypse on TV. Like, <laughs> right, right. there's no they quarantine the city and you can't get out of the city. But outside the city, everyone's fine. So he's uh, gone in to get the scoop, which is pretty much the most cynical yeah. view of humanity you could <laughs> ever have. It's yeah, like, everyone's watching on TV <laughs> and <laughs> we cordoned off the city and now it's a pleasure dome um, yeah. for uh, for other well not for the people who are inside. So um, how important was it to get all the weapons that uh, sort of like pieced together in this yeah, film? Yeah, you can see them flying by on the screen here right now. Um, we, it was fun because we had to put in all the great combo weapons that people love. Uh, and you can see the chainsaws here, the sled saw, the paddle saw. Um, but at the same time, invent our own because every game has to bring its own, you know, combo weapons. So we had to come up with our own. It was funny talking with Capcom because I was like, we don't have giant floating hams, though. But we, <laughs> um, but talking with Capcom, figuring out, I gotta get some health. Jeez. Although I'm max super, why can't I get it? Oh, you're maxed. Oh, all right. Well, I gotta use my supers up. But anyway, so the talking with Capcom, I was like begging them. I'm like, what are all the cool combo weapons that aren't in the f games that I can use in the film? And they're like, dude, every single combo weapon we've ever come up with <laughs> you know we've put that into the into the games already so we came up with our own cool ones as well one of the ones i like a lot is the uh katana shovel so it's got a katana <laughs> on one end and a shovel on the other so you've got slicing and bludgeoning so <laughs> yeah well it's also nice if like you know let's say you have a moment to to pause from all the zombie killing <laughs> you could have a garden yeah also. exactly Make a garden quick. Yeah, if you get that if you get that truck over there, you're going to get to All right. get on the steamroller, which All is right. super fun. All right, I'll m make my way over there. Get out of my way. <laughs> That's the best possible way to bring people out of your way yeah. as well. I love this game, too, because there's so many nods to... to old Capcom games. Yeah. Um, in addition, you know, all the... All the um, 
Well, we even put like there was a nod to um, in uh, the at one point they're in a military base and they're calling out like different things like you know VidCon, Capcom, <laughs> like 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 they are like Mission Control and NASA. Nice. Um, but yeah, it was fun to incorporate as much as we could. How closely did you um, get to work with Capcom on this one? Uh, well, the cool thing is Capcom Vancouver, their studio in Vancouver, are the ones that make the game. Oh, that's um, super convenient. So they were just down the road from our production office and got to visit, and all the weapons we built and stuff are now hanging in their office. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You just donated them, or they showed up on set, and they're like, we're taking them. <laughs> we're coming during them. A bit of both. You know, you got to keep them happy so that... <laughs> And you, you've played, like, you played uh, the, the other versions of this game. Yep. This one, you know, obviously... I haven't uh, played this arcade different. version, but I've played um, DR1, 2, and 3. Right, cool. Yeah, those are a little bit more serious in town. <laughs> this, this one's not... Well, to a degree. I mean, in DR3, you can have a banana hammock and a flamethrower attached to your balls running around. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. It starts off, yeah, I, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. It's like on the Xbox One, the tone started getting a little, like... A little bit more like real world uh, yeah. zombie stuff. Why do you think? Um, why do you think like in pop culture now zombies continue to be such a thing? I mean, it's been that trend has been going for a while now. Yeah, I th it was funny when we, um, you know, got the movie going. Pretty much every human being I know called me saying they wanted to be a zombie, or like Facebook me basically saying, "Here's what I would look like if I was a zombie," and like, "I will <laughs> take the day off work. I'll do anything you want." And um, I think a lot of it is just like. There's something, because they're so close to being people, for some reason that totally, you know, oh, can I, if I use my super on this, does it shoot the flamethrowers? No, you actually, you have to get off the thing to oh, use man. your super. You can't shoot the flamethrower on the... I know. It's a ripoff, right? <laughs> like, the, um, there's a missed opportunity there. <laughs> anyway, um, what was your question? <laughs> I Oh, why the zombie apocalypse is... Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's just because... There's something human about them that we all kind of, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I screwed that up. Now you're going to have to take this. You only have 47 left to kill, so you, you should be go. able to Just do it. i take my way through it here. Yeah. It's interesting. I feel like the... There you go. Now, now you get to go on to... The next round. A very classic Capcom thing, which is... <laughs> You're going around the city to destroy various uh, vending machines, which I feel like <laughs> is always an objective. Well, they're not vending machines. They're generators. They look yeah. kind of like vending machines. But it's always like, well, that's a classic video game thing, right? Find this thing and destroy it, or yeah. you're never going to be able to get out of the city. Yeah, well, we always do things. Like in the film, there's like people, you know, a woman standing on top of a car surrounded by zombies screaming that they have to go help, and always like little references like that. Were there people on the cast that you were like, I absolutely need this person on the cast? Or was it was everything kind of an interview, like, or uh, I should say an audition process? Yeah, I mean, it's a combination, especially we got an amazing cast. And uh, you had to really find that combination of people that could see how cool a digital project could be, um, rather than it being a big $100 million movie. Right. Um, but also, you know, really amazing actors like Jesse... Metcalf, who plays um, Chase Carter, the hero of our film, he really, really, really wanted to be in the film, and I uh, was, you know, a huge fan of everything. But then also, all right, so this is what I gotta destroy here. Yeah, you just gotta destroy this thing, <laughs> and then the zombies are gonna come in and harass you because they don't know any better. It's like I got a generator to destroy here, man. <laughs> What's it generating? I don't know. I think it's probably generating power to the city or something. It's all right. It's, let's it's see if this case. helps. Oh, look at that! Extreme close. <laughs> Um, and he just really, really wanted to show people what he could do as an action hero. Um, and he came in and did all his crazy stunts and was throwing, almost at the end of every day, we had to buy him a massage because he had put his body through so much hell <laughs> as he was, like, running around, killing people, getting thrown around. Because the fun thing about Dead Rising is you're always, like, kind of only half in control. Right. You're always kind of thinking you're doing badass and then... All right, oh yeah, the next generator here. Enough with these zombies. Um, and uh, so I always had him always in being thrown around, never always the, totally in control. That's cool. Who's uh, w What's sort of your favorite, what was your favorite uh, moment working with the cast on set? Um, well, one of the coolest things we did was a big one-take 
um, in the film that is right in the middle of the movie, and it's a five-minute zombie killing spree, uh, nice. all in one big take that had all the cast in it and hundreds of zombies, and was kind of my attempt at really. Uh oh, I'm not doing too well here. Uh, use, use your supers. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> um, Where's a floating? Ha there we go. Right. Where's a floating ham when you need one? <laughs> well, it's funny because like in the game or in the film, we have them just like eating food. Oh. A ham just folds you right up, doesn't oh, no, it? You got yeah. it. All right. Um, eating food whenever they're, you know, <laughs> need to uh, recoup. Um, yeah, we did this big five-minute action scene um, that's all one take with hundreds of zombies and with the sledge saw just going all the way through the entire street, just like I'm doing now. So how many... That sounds like a crazy challenge to me. How many days... Or weeks or months did it take <laughs> to plan that? Well, we shot the movie in less than a month, so <laughs> wow. we didn't have that. We basically spent one day doing it. Like um, pre pre production wise, what do you what do you, how, how did you kind of sort of envision that? And conceive it was it? pretty fun because we had like um, if you go on my Facebook page, you can see it. We basically, had a huge map of the street uh, with all like miniature cars and little zombie toy figures, and kind of mapping the whole thing out so that you could uh, kind of plan everything beforehand. And then, uh, then we went to the set and just kind of like a play almost would rehearse it. And uh, so a plane gives you <laughs> a thousand points. Um, is it upstairs? Where is it? Oh, you got to go out of this building, I think. It's, it's a little further down the way. Um, basically, what was I talking about? Man, this is hard to interview and play a <laughs> game at the same time. We're, we're just cranking <laughs> up the degree of difficulty here. It's, it's no fair, okay. I admit. Um, we were talking a little bit about, uh, I think, um, I think it's your pre-production on the, on yeah, the Yeah, so pre-production, we, we would plan out the whole thing, and then we'd go to the sets, and just with a few people, it's got to be up there, I think. That's my guess. If I was playing this game, that's, see, it's up. Oh, it's, uh, go down the street there to the left. No, go uh, out of uh, this building, and then just go down the side of this building, All right. and there's a staircase the other way. Not this way, the other yeah, left. The, yeah, the other way. <laughs> I know it's totally, uh, it's totally confusing because they actually set you up for failure. They, they kind of point at the building, but you really need to go, um, to where that go, the big go sign is down the street. Perfect. Look at, at that. Look at that carnage. Bodies. <laughs> at least I've been doing something. Set. That's right. Um, yeah, and then we would practice everything on set, uh, just rehearse everything, and then on the day, is it in here? Yep, yes, go upstairs. Is. All right. This is totally unfair because not only are we interviewing you and making <laughs> you think, but this is your first time playing this version of the game. So. Yeah, I mean, I've seen all these sets in DR3, just not, it's got a different UI and stuff. So that sounds like, I, to me, filmmaking wise, that seems like a huge challenge. And you're, and you're shooting it all in one day, which is crazy. Yeah, it was pretty risky because if we didn't get it that day, we wouldn't get it at all, but it worked out in the end. That's awesome. Yeah. So talk about a little bit about um, digital, because um, obviously this is it's kind of groundbreaking. It's a movie debuting on digital, and and uh, it's it's uh, one of the first things that Crackle's done this way as, w as well, right? Yeah. Um, that's the really cool thing about it is it's coming out on Crackle, which is free, so anyone can see it, um, which is awesome. And then the cool thing about it being digital, so it's kind of like House of Cards for Crackle. It's their first time really investing, in, or at least in this case, on a big kind of zombie action movie with legendary and the cool thing there is that you know because it's online there's a lot less rules and restrictions like there's no oh, i gotta destroy the garbage do garage door um you know there's no ratings board there's no running time there's no kind of all these things that you have in the real world when you're <laughs> making stuff online there's kind of no rules and so we were basically allowed to do everything that was right for dead rising uh rather than worry about um all right gotta kill these guys time up man time up <laughs> it's too busy talking <laughs> well so like i said we're being totally unfair i'll, I'll take over the helm and then all we right. can talk a little bit more All right, I'm back playing. We're gonna give Zach a break because uh, so I can concentrate about what I'm saying. It's just tough, man. It's not. <laughs> it's not easy. I even. I'm. I'm gonna sit here like. Oh look, she's got a. All right. She's got a gun. This is this what is you. Way want. easier. This is what you want in the zombie apocalypse. I think. Yeah. Well, we have a character in the film, badass chick with a leather jacket too. So. 
that's uh, it's it's a necessary thing. I think <laughs> you need to always have the. Well, the cool thing about putting badass chicks in your movie is that, you know, dudes always love it because there's nothing nothing wrong with that. And then all the women who watch it also really dig it. Whereas you have really weak female characters, you know, guys don't really notice, but then women watching it just think the movie sucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like this isn't true to life at all. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, I'm going to get back to the graveyard. I, I think I, there's nothing wrong with just going and, and, you know, just driving over a bunch of uh, zombies all the time. <laughs> It's a pretty badass. I don't, I don't know what your opinion. Like, what's your favorite game of all time? Uh, of all time, that's a good question. I think. I was on, honestly, I think it's probably um, the original Homeworld RTS. Nice. Uh, I just would play that for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours <laughs> after beating beating every level, just because it was so cinematic and so beautiful, and you could really just, you know, look at your ships all the way down to the tiniest little ship all the way up to the biggest you know mothership right and uh and just always be it was one of the first real-time strategy games that you could do play in all three axes you know what i mean you could attack from above and you could look from any angle and i always loved playing that that's cool yeah i feel like uh when i grew up i, I was always like a, a pc gamer as well like that was where my first love was. i used to do that thing where i would get the compute magazine back in the day that's how old I am, is I would get this yeah. magazine. I would, like, take the programs in the back, which were written in BASIC, and I would go, like, write them out in my computer. And then I would have to leave my computer on for days after I put the program in. <laughs> and uh, it was always this painstaking thing where if you got one line wrong, like, look at that, I already flipped my <laughs> What's bike. her super? What? What's her superpower? I, oh, let's, let's find out. <laughs> Apparently it gets really, really close in. <laughs> Oh, she just oh, shoots she's just shoot She's doing gun, gun. What what is it? What do they call those? In gun, uh, gun play? Gun no, plays? in uh, what was that movie with Christian Bale? Gun kata. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> gun kata. Oh man, <laughs> Equilibrium. Yeah, I like that movie. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm getting my butt kicked here. Yeah, I liked uh, Equilibrium. I think was a little underrated. Yeah, well, it, it just kind of looked cheap, but the, it was a really cool idea. All right, so, you got to bring out the gun kata again. Oh, you got the. <laughs> I got this back. This is otherwise otherwise I just feel like I'm not cutting it on this level. Yeah, you know? well, like I just my seven, skills. Seven hundred and fifty zombies is a lot. You yeah, got, you can't did do you go that right with, through the wall? You can't do that with a pea shooter. Oh no, that was just a glitch. So <laughs> what are what are sort of your some of your um favorites in the zombie genre? Sub genre? I think probably my favorite's twenty days later. Even though it's it kinda reinvented it and some people say it's not even really a zombie movie. I just That's love splitting hairs because <laughs> it's fast zombies and just the way that Danny Boyle reinvented it, um, I thought was really cool and um, just remember seeing that and being blown away by it. I was watching this um, that that uh, documentary with Keanu Reeves. Um, he was talking about the move to digital for filmmaking and you know how some people how some people like rejected it at first, but then there's real value to the kinds of stories you can tell. So he's talking about 28 Days Later and how it was like part of, kind of like his part of the dogma movement. Yeah, well, um, I, yeah, I saw that documentary too. I thought that was really cool how he was just like, felt like he, he had been making movies the wrong way his whole life when he saw the stuff dogma guys were doing. I'd never thought of 28 Days Later in a dogma kind of way, but it, it totally is. My favorite um, anecdote from that, from that particular thing, Danny Boyle talking about, uh, you know, how they, how they, Digital allowed him to clear the streets of London for like five minutes, so he could get some of those empty London shots. Yeah, because basically, because they could have so many cameras, he you know set up like whatever twenty cameras, which it would be hard to do on film because uh, it would be really expensive. And then they would clear the street for like six minutes, but when you have twenty cameras going, yeah. and then you cut it together, it makes it look like a much longer thing. It's interesting because I think with found footage and stuff like that, like we're really used to seeing those kind of images. But at one time, like it was really weird to see a movie done in digital. I remember the first time I saw Chuck and Buck. I'm like, this looks like garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's come a long way. We we shot all digital on this, obviously. And man, you were way better than that at me. <laughs> I've played this game like a hundred <laughs> times though. So uh, like, if I wasn't, then well, you I just, have, just to get on the bike. I have no muscle memory. <laughs> That's what that means. Um, yeah, it was one of the cool things, speaking of muscle memory, that we took from DR3 was that idea that the zombies 
kind of remember a bit of who they were. So like the cop zombies can use guns and oh, that's cool. Um, you know, we have all sorts of zombies using weapons, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like there's there's these rules that purists have about zombies, where it's like, oh, zombies can't do this or that. Zombies can't talk. Although you saw in like Day of the Dead, <laughs> yeah. you know, the zombie starting to learn some stuff. Um, what 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 are your particular zombie rules? What were the things that you were trying to adhere to that you were like a zombie would for sure do this and for sure not do this? Yeah, I mean that was the tough thing. The one that everyone always brings up is fast zombies or slow zombies. Um, but you know, if you look at the game, they're kind of both. Like they will, as a mob, if you're not near them, they're all kind of slow walking around. But then, if they need to, when they're next to you, they'll j like run and jump on top of you and tackle you to the ground. Right. So that's kind of the approach we took is basically um, fast and slow, but basically slow and then when you're nearby they're fast. Um, <laughs> and then they can also kind of use any anything that they did a million times as a human, they can sort of still do as a zombie just really badly. <laughs> I think those are good rules because I kind of feel like... Did she, she have a beard? She had a beard because of the <laughs> helmet. The helmet comes with a beard. Annie, what happened? <laughs> And he's been on the supplements. <laughs> Anything goes in the apocalypse. So I think I think the thing that this act this this plane thing actually does is that you can call in an airstrike. Oh, okay. So I you, was wondering. I thought it just gave you a thousand points. It's not just a thousand <laughs> points. You call in an airstrike, we'll give you a beard again. And then you see like there it goes. That's that's problematic. Well, that's a big part of the game is the airstrike. The the game mechanic in most of the games other than this arcade version is the countdown to the firebombing. Right. And uh, that's a big part of the movie as well. So yeah, li plot wise, like, does the does the film like take anything like specifically, m like more than that, like pl other plot points? Well, the cool thing about the film is it takes place within the storyline of the games. So it takes place between Dead Rising Two and Dead Rising Three, and tells the story of what happened between those outbreaks. So it's total canon too. Yeah, it's, it's canon. Like actually, part of the yeah, we basically, t t um, you know, in Dead Rising Two, you have Zombrex as an injection. And then in three, it's a chip that everyone's kind of, you know, pushing back against. And uh, our film tells the story of how we got from injections to chips. I like that. I like that the well, obviously this movie is really, really like um, dedicated to telling the story. You know, that the game stories are at least using elements of the world. Um, it was fun when we were doing the art direction because we just like walked around the map <laughs> right. with the art, you know, production designer. And just looked at, you know, oh, this is a great wall. Let's use this. Oh, let's use this vehicle. Okay, let's. And just like walking around an already built version of everything. So since you were in Vancouver, we touched on this before, did you actually like go talk to the guys there a bunch? Or? Yeah. yeah. No, they came in and um, they were really helpful as we were making it. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like uh, I, I, I've seen the, some of the, like we, we ran the Zombrex commercial. I love all the nods to that stuff. Uh Zombrex, Zombrex specifically. What was uh, what was uh, what was Rob Riggle working like to work with? He was awesome because he's playing Frank West, obviously, but he, his improv skills are just crazy. So we just filmed him, I think, for like six or seven hours, and all of it was usable. <laughs> so <laughs> that just makes your job a lot harder. I know <laughs> the film's only two hours long, so it's like <laughs> cutting it down was so hard. Just like Rob, I need I need less from you. This is the only time you'll hear me say this. <laughs> well, we this. Would just you know you just gotta let him go, obviously. And then so there's a lot of scenes in the film with him that are literally just improvised, like they weren't even written. It's just such good stuff that we had to awesome. put it in there. Well, it's such a gift when you have somebody like that on set because then you can just you know you can just kind of let him go. Look at that! Wow, I died. <laughs> and with that, and you had 139 seconds left. Man, I know, I know. You well, you know, I'm, I'll revive for a thousand. <laughs> this, it's horrible. I would never do this. You gotta eat your meals when there's zombies. I know. I, well, you know, I, back. I didn't even, I didn't even like pay attention to the turkey, because now I'm getting all. Uh, That's the first mistake. All worked up. So tell everybody where they can, uh, where they can watch this and when and all that, all the fun details. Absolutely. Um, well, the film is going to come out exclusively on Xbox early. You'll be able to watch it on Xbox, and then it'll be available for everyone March 27th uh, on Crackle, which you can check out on crackle.com or on your Apple TV or PlayStation, Xbox, Rook, you know, Roku, basically every device that streams <laughs> content, uh, and it'll be on there for free. 
I love that. I love that. No matter what you have these days, you can get things like crackle and 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 have you know a whole bunch of extra, you know, extra content available to you. It's exactly. awesome. Exactly. So all right, I'm I, I'm done killing zombies. Thank you so <laughs> so much for talking to us today. I was excited to be here. And uh, I can't wait to see the movie. It's uh, yeah, I'm really really proud of it. I think fans are gonna really dig it. We did a lot of work to to stay really true to the to the franchise. So I'm excited for people to see it. Awesome. Thanks a lot. We'll check it out.